welcome everybody back to the channel here. We're going to jump in, do an M1 finance review. Uh, all the um, stocks that are available in this tutorial are also available to you uh, in a framework portfolio that I've built for you. Uh, that's uh, in the description below. Um, the link will kick you over to uh, the way that I've divvied up the S&P 500 into 10 individualized slices. So it makes it very, very easy. Independent Investor Channel is affiliated with M1 Finance. If you click on any of the links, uh, the channel can receive a small compensation for offering content like this. Uh, I do this to provide a tutorial on portfolios and different strategies that you can use. M1 Finance can be used uh, most appropriately for those investors that just want to put it away and forget about it. It's a passive investing forum. It's a great platform to use for ETF investing, uh, as well as dividend growth investing, because you just invest in it and you forget it. You fund the uh, holdings up, portfolio uh, redistributes those funds uh, as you fund it. M1 does all the work for you. And all you've got to do is, um, is it just invest monitor the progress in the portfolio. That's why I roll these out with some frequency so we can continue to uh, evaluate the progress. You can understand some of the features and functions of M1 Finance. With that, guys, let's jump into the portfolio and get started. Probably no better way to demonstrate the power of investing by just taking you into a portfolio um, like this one to show you what's possible. Um, this is one of many strategies that you can deploy uh, in your application. This is a dividend growth strategy, which invests in a lot of the companies that we know and love that we can recognize. I'll go down the list of the holdings within this portfolio. M1 Finance allows you to invest any amount of money uh, into single companies uh, of your choosing and, and uh, allows you to adjust the amount of money that you want to go to each one of them um, and, and really allow your money to spread out with the um, with the opportunity made possible through M1 Finance in purchasing partial shares of companies. So if you were going to buy full shares of companies in a traditional brokerage account, you may only look to buy five or ten shares of that one company. M1 Finance allows you to select the companies, whether it be 20, 30, 50, whatever it, it is, there's 79 holdings in this specific portfolio, all companies that I didn't necessarily want to own in a larger capacity in the in the other accounts. So I put smaller positions in here to allow them to grow. This is established to um, uh, be passive in nature and allow the dividends to work. Now M1 has offered a new feature here, which is kind of cool, where you can click into here and see where the dividend renderings are coming from. I'll click in there real quick and just show you what this is. Um, this is what the portfolio has rendered in way of earned dividends uh, through each of the slices there. Makes sense utilities on the top here. Kind of surprised to see technology there um, other than the fact that I do have uh, traditional dividend paying uh, stocks in this portfolio um, and some of the other uh, holdings that uh, have a dividend, maybe a smaller uh, dividend payout like Apple, Microsoft have smaller dividends uh, in the larger portfolios because I own a, a lot bigger positions in these. So we'll escape out of this and go back to the home page here. Just a quick recap of the portfolio. We've owned this since December of 2019, so just shy of two years, which is pretty impressive. And I think for a lot of people out there that are looking at does investing work, you know, what what is a realistic uh, um, uh, anticipated rate of return or an anticipated growth over my money or, you know, is my money going to remain stagnant over the years or what's the freaking point, you know? And I think these tutorials really do provide kind of a roadmap of what's possible. Um, there's been nothing uh, extremely uh, impressive about this or, or difficult about this. Once the portfolio is established, you can just fund this up over time. And I believe I do $50 every two weeks into this account. It comes out of the paycheck directly. I don't miss that money at all. And it helps to supplement the dollar cost average schedule uh, over this portfolio uh, over the long term. Um, my initial goal was to get up to 10000 in this account. Uh, I, I'm here staring down 30000 So we've just surpassed the $25,000 milestone, which is another really big milestone to come through in a relatively small portfolio here 
um, but just uh, an advocate for retail investors and an, and an ambassador for what's possible uh, in investing. I do want to remind everybody that this portfolio uh, in a smaller capacity is provided in the description below. Um, it's broken down in the capacity that I have it broken down in. Um, the 10 sectors in the S&P 500, I have omitted real estate. Um, you, it's at your discretion to add that back into it, especially if it's a Roth IRA. But I choose not to own real estate within this uh, account because it is a, a, a taxable account. Um, I do own real estate in my Roth IRAs, and that's just how I prefer to do it. But these 10 uh, slices here within the portfolio um, really kind of provide the framework for you guys. Um, and if you did opt to um, use those portfolios as a template and a benchmark for yourself, they are easy to add, omit, and add the stocks in there as you choose. Uh, please be advised, if you do click on any of the links, the Independent Investor Channel can receive a small compensation for providing a, a tutorial um, and providing these examples for you as a service. So um, it, it helps a lot. It's great. You know, being an affiliate with M1 Finance for now a couple years has really opened my eyes to the power of what this could potentially mean for would-be investors. It's a fabulous wealth building tool. You can see here that the gains versus the returns and the target um, are, are um, really unarguable. I, I really can't <clears throat> ask for any better performance than this uh, out of each of the sectors. When we start to get into the individual holdings, some of these have come off a little bit with the uh, latest um, little bit of a hiccup in the market. I sense that there's an undercurrent of, um, of, of, of rotation, uh, values taking a little bit of a hit on the chin, which is fine. Um, still getting those dividends rolling in here uh, on the portfolio. Um, so nothing really to shake a stick at. But this is the framework that you can expect here. I've already built this portfolio, so you don't have to even do the work. You just click on the link, invest in the pie, and you're there. You're good to go. So uh, it helps a lot for would-be investors that don't know the first foggiest way to start. I've already broken it down in a very, very simple way um, to, to, to really um, spread your money out over the S&P 500 uh, in, in a way that I've done here. So the only sector that is missing, I, I will say again, is real estate. So if it's something that you want to add back in there, it's very, very simple to do. Just edit and add that slice in here as appropriate. But um, these 10 work for me. Let's go up and we'll take a look at the holdings real quick within here. You're going to recognize a lot of these 79 positions in this portfolio. Um, or renders a nice dividend, higher than average than the S&P 500. So this allows me to strategically invest in the companies that I want to own, which is kind of cool. Um, top end here, Goldman Sachs. And I'm just going to scroll through this list, highlight a few, obviously a, a few names that are down. No problem. I don't mind owning Disney in a downturn. It's no problem. The parks are full. Um, they're reserved through 2022. People are hungry to get back to the Disney parks, and it's a company that I want to own long term. So this short term doesn't bother me at all, just like any of these other diamonds of the stock market. Visas come off a little bit. No problem. I have no problem holding these. Um, the cool thing about M1 Finance is you could, um, you could presume that the monies are going to be more focused on flowing into these underweight types of assets as opposed to the companies that have really run up, like McDonald's. Look at Thermo Fisher up 30%. Home Depot is up 40%. Fantastic performance there. Um, so the money's going to flow into the underweight assets with NM1 Finances. It's always looking to fund and, and achieve that um, uh, target allocation that you've selected over the portfolio. Look at Eli Lilly up 44%. And I don't own huge positions in them. And that's totally fine. That wasn't the intent of this. The intent was to grab exposure in companies that I want exposure to. Man, look at that Lowe's, 36%. Fantastic. Costco up huge. You know, I don't even own a share of Costco. But it just shows you the power of, an, of investing, even in partial shares. And this really can break it down for a lot of investors out there that don't have a lot of starting capital. Maybe you've got a $5,000 bill or a $2,500 bill that you want to put to work here and you're wondering how much of an impact can you make? How much stock can you actually buy? M1 Finance makes the dollar amount somewhat irrelevant and allows you to select the companies that you want to invest in. 
and it will adjust the money accordingly and disperse those dollars over the stocks that you want to buy, which is kind of a reverse methodology in that a lot of people have $2,500 to spend and that they'll, they'll, they'll pick a basket of maybe five or 10 stocks, buy a few shares of each one of them. Um, and, and it doesn't speak to the opportunity of further diversifying um, like I said, this is just shy of 80 holdings within this portfolio. So you start to compare, you know, a, a 10 stock portfolio to this and 80. Um, I, I would contend that this is much more of a diversified type of approach. With that said, I also don't consider an 80 stock portfolio fully diversified. I think that you can truly uh, find and seek out diversification through ETF investing, which you could own hundreds and in some cases even thousands of stock within each ETF. So um, we're not looking to pursue uh, true market diversification here by, by doing this. What we're looking to do is achieve a higher uh, dividend uh, rendering uh, compared to the S&P 500, um, which we do that here just shy of 3% on an aggregate over the portfolio. So just as we scroll through the list here, you're going to recognize a lot of these names here. Again, I'm not going to earmark all of them, but uh, 79 holdings total in the portfolio. Most of them are in the green. I think I've got about around 20 um, that are in the red in whatever capacity it is. I didn't care if it was a dollar down. I still counted it as a red. Um, but FedEx is a company I want to own, so I don't care. You know, BHP Billiton here uh, down a couple bucks. I mean, you know, I'm just not worried about that. Kraft Heinz food with the high dividend rendering down 23%. I threw it in that category of down stocks, but I think you guys get the idea here of the importance of diversifying across, you know, multiple sectors. Uh, M1 Finance allows you to do that and grab a, a very, very large swath of the stock market and, and do so using the power of partial shares here. And you can notice, you know, a lot of these companies, I mean, look at that. I mean, two tenths of a share in in United Health Group. I mean, who would have thought? Um, just just a fantastic way to uh, grab a, a large Dow component there in United Health and do so with a relatively uh, small amount of money. So, with that, guys, we'll kick you back and we will in, uh, conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the portfolio here. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, 80 holdings just shy of in this portfolio. Nothing crazy. It's a single stock portfolio. Uh, I explained my thoughts on, on how I consider this to be um, a little bit more diversified away from a traditional way of investing in single stock and that you could you know, own a basket of five or 10, 15, 20, even 30 stocks, right? And not come near the diversification that I've just showed you here with the 80 stocks. And be advised, true diversification is sought through uh, either mutual funds, ETFs, or index funds. Uh, I believe that uh, there's a lot of people out there with an appetite to add a, a single stock portfolio to the mix. Um, this just allows you to, to really invest in a lot more companies um, with a lot less money. Uh, instead of trying to pick those you know, 10 or 12 or 15 that are going to work for you long term, it really does require more of an active type of profile. And this allows you to spread your wealth uh, over a multiple, multitude of holdings. Uh, all of these companies in my portfolio, you recognize every single one of them. Uh, and it's a cool way of seeking some exposure, get some dividend uh, income uh, and some dividend growth strategy added to your existing portfolio. Guys, if you enjoy the content, want to make sure and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave your comments at the bottom of this video. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.